What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I am back with a video, but this time I'll be talking about one of the great players in NBA history, that being Michael Jordan. And as you guys know, Jordan was one of those competitive players of all time, and he would do whatever it took to get a W. If he had to play through injury, sickness, or any bumps and bruises, he was definitely going to do that and give you his best every single night. Now looking at 2021, that mindset of playing all 82 games, or even all the season, has definitely shifted. As players today practice load management, they rest for the playoffs, and overall there is no pride in playing every single game. Now looking back to the 90s or even 10 years ago, there was tremendous pride in playing every single game and being there for your team every night. And today we're going to look back on Michael Jordan's career and look at some of the injuries he overcame in his playing career. Now before we do that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so, and if you could like this video, I'd greatly appreciate it. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So first up, we're going to start out in 1986, Jordan's second year in the NBA. And three games in the season, he would go down with a broken left foot. And at this point in Jordan's career, he had not missed a single game in the pros, college, or high school. Now this devastating injury caused Jordan to miss 64 games, the most ever of his career. Now Jordan being Jordan, did anything possible to get back on the court, and he wanted to get this Bulls team in the playoffs for the second straight year. His electrifying aerial antics, his flair for the spectacular. After one season, Michael Jordan skyrocketed amongst the elite of the NBA. But in his third game this season, Air Jordan suffered the first injury of his career. A broken foot sidelined him for 64 games. Yet despite doctors' warnings and management's objections, Michael returned to the Bulls in time for their playoff drive. And many wondered why. Once I got that confidence and... You know, the feeling in the foot was getting stronger as I continued to play. Uh, it wasn't nothing anything could, anyone could have said that could stop me. Jordan's confidence and intensity have returned, but others still have their doubts. He seems to be 100% healthy, but the x-rays that were taken of his foot show that the fracture is, although healing uh, very well, not completely healed. If it's re-injured, it uh, could conceivably take longer to heal, and it may not heal by natural processes and require surgery. And even that's not a 100% uh, uh, guarantee that he'll heal properly. So with Jordan the Bulls taking into account the risk, they would clear him to come back for the last 15 games this season. And for the majority of those games, he was on a minutes restriction. It did come uh, about in games where uh, his time was up and he'd come off the floor and he said, you, you'll have to let me play you know, uh, another minute or another minute and a half or I've got to finish up this game so that we can win. And I said, Michael, I can't. But when it came to playoffs, all those restrictions were taken off, and he was given full reign versus the Boston Celtics, one of the best teams in NBA history. Now this right here is a legendary series, as in Game 1, Jordan had 49 points, and in Game 2, he had a playoff record 63 points in the Boston Garden. And for this series, he averaged 43.7 points per game, the fourth highest average in a playoff series ever. And after this great individual performance, Larry Bird had this to say. We end up winning the series, but it was an incredible, incredible playoff performance. I, I've never seen it before, and I had never seen it after. That wasn't Michael Jordan out there. It was God disguised as Michael Jordan. I, I know we started Dennis Johnson out on him, and then we went with uh, Danny Ainge, myself, uh, which it was really easy then when I started guarding him. Uh, then Bill Walton, and we was trying to run him to help all the time, but he had his outside shot going so well that he really didn't need to penetrate that much. Got it! So Jordan this year faced the worst injury of his career, he came back early, and he dominated in the playoffs. Not many players in NBA history would have wanted to come back as an 8th seed and put the dynasty Boston Celtics, but Jordan, he was one of those players, and he showed out in that series. Now skipping ahead 7 years, we go to 1993, as Jordan this time would have a severe wrist injury that wouldn't require surgery, but it would require a cast and a brace. And we're looking at the 93 season, this Bulls team faced tremendous adversity in route to the three-peat. And a lot of NBA fans don't realize how much pain Jordan was playing through. Speaking of that, hold your arm up here just a second. This <laughs> brace on your wrist, I don't want to over-dramatize uh, this or anything, but you do have a sore wrist. Uh, it looked like you worked it out pretty well here tonight. Was this kind of an exercise for your wrist? Well, I got a little tendonitis in my wrist, and as, more, as, as many times as I can shoot, the more pain is going to hurt them all. <laughs> And it really only took Jordan one game to adjust, as in Game 2, he had 18 points, his worst game of the 93 playoffs. But after that game for the rest of the postseason, Jordan 
or to put up absurd numbers, averaging 35.9 points per game, 7.4 boards, 6.5 assists, 2.1 steals, on 46-41, and 79 splits, which on its own are very impressive numbers, but when you take into account the injury Jordan had, it makes even that more impressive. And specifically, look at the 93 finals, Jordan in this series averaged 41 points per game, a finals record, had four 40-point games and 55 points in game four with a severely strained wrist. So the next time you look at Jordan's stats and how he played in this playoff run, just remember he was doing this with a bad wrist, which could have severely hampered him if he was a lesser player. Now next up, we skip ahead to 1997, where Jordan once again faced tremendous adversity. As in the 97 finals, Jordan entering game five, with the series tied at two games apiece, Jordan came down with severe flu-like symptoms. Well, we all knew kind of uh, at our morning uh, sort of get together, it wasn't really a shoot around, but mm -hmm. we would meet and just have breakfast together. So we all knew and it was kind of thrown up in the air whether or not Michael would be playing. But uh, So you, you guys know. thought he might not play? Yeah, well, some of the guys did. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was one of those situations where really it was, um, it was a 50-50. Mm -hmm. chance that he may or may not play but knowing Michael like I did in the years that I spent with him I kind of knew he was gonna make a, a, an effort and you know come game time you know he showed up he was on the bus and pretty much did uh, his same routine you know you could see that he was real sluggish and right. laying around so uh, I just felt like I'm gonna have to give him a little, little bit of a lift to yeah. get through this one tonight now whatever you think happened to Jordan is really besides the point you could obviously tell in this game he was sick and he was definitely struggling. But even with that being the case, Jordan had 38 points, 7 boards and 5 assists, and a comeback victory. And in the fourth quarter, he had a game-high 15 points, nearly outscoring the entire Jazz team, and he had a clutch three-pointer to ice the game. Michael trying to hit the second free throw, does not. But Jordan sick and everything fights for the rebound. Out to Pippen, Pip to Mike. Michael, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your threes just hypnotize me. And game fives in a series are always pivotal. It's the difference between going down 3-2 and going up 3-2. And the team that wins that game wins the series 70% of the time. So if Jordan wasn't mentally tough in this game, the Bulls possibly could have lost the 97 finals after going down 3-2. And just maybe Jordan would have played in a game seven in the finals. And when looking back on this game, you could argue this is the most iconic and most memorable sickness game in NBA history. Now moving on from 97, we look at 98, as Jordan once again faced tremendous adversity as he was 35 years old and his Bulls team was the oldest team in the league. And they were looking to three-peat and win their sixth and last championship. And it is well documented how tough this playoff run was, the adversity from the front office, the players, the overall injury and fatigue. It was definitely an all-time high for this Bulls team. And when looking at Jordan, the injury he faced was a broken finger on his shooting hand. You know, we talked earlier about Jordan having the, the bum index finger, but the smart veteran players, they won't let you know that they're injured. Normal guys would put a wrap on their finger so everybody would feel sorry for him, but Jordan understanding that. It's Jordan. It's basket. Now, Jordan sees that the baseline is clear. He doesn't trust his jump shot because of his finger, and he wants to get to the basket. And when looking at the playoffs, Jordan averaged 32.4 points a game on 46% shooting, the fourth highest average ever for a championship run. And he did that while playing with a broken finger on his shooting hand. And the next time you think of 98 Jordan in the last dance Bulls, just remember he hit the iconic shot over Brian Russell with a broken finger, adding insult to injury. Now, the last major injury Jordan faced was in 2002 with the Washington Wizards. As in this year, Jordan will go out with a severe knee injury where he had torn cartilage in that knee. And up to that point in the season, Jordan was averaging 22-5-5, one of only three players in the league putting up those numbers, the other two being Kobe and Tracy McGrady. And before that injury, he had five 40-point games and one 50-point game. Now looking ahead to the next year, Jordan was 39 years old and averaging 20 points per game on essentially one knee. We was, in, we was with the Wizards and it was the second year. That was the year he started having all the knee problems, right? So I was in the training room and his knee was like swollen up, looked like the elephant man, right? Like it looked terrible. 
So the trainers came in, then they were draining his knee. Like, I don't know if you remember, like he had to keep getting his knee drained, but he got it drained a whole lot more than they reported it. So if mm -hmm. they said he had to do it once a week, he was doing it like three times a week. Like, getting his, like after the game, it would just swell up, right? So they would, he would, you know, put it in and take it out, and it was just like this black tar goo stuff that would come out. It looked awful. I was like, ugh, like I'm over there getting my little, I'm like, ugh, what is going on over there? So I asked him, I asked him, I looked at him, and I was like, why are you doing this? Like, you don't have to do this. You're MJ. You know what I mean? Your legacy is set. Why do you, why are you even playing right now? And he just, he just looked at me and he shook his head. He was like, and that's all he said. But that just goes to show Jordan, even at 39 years old, battling through numerous injuries, being the most accomplished player of all time, still wanted to go out there and play all 82 games, which he did in that 2003 season at 39 years old. So that right there was five major injuries that Michael Jordan overcame in his playing career. As you could tell, Jordan is one of the most tough players of all time, and you could definitely see that as he played through tremendous pain and tremendous adversity. So as always, thanks for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so. And if you could like this video, I'd greatly appreciate it. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.